All right, so our next two variables are uh, called marginal revenue and marginal cost, MR and MC. Now, these two variables are related to, they're, they're basically the same thing as, if you think back to our lesson on utility maximization, the last lesson uh, where we talked about how uh, individuals want to maximize uh, their utility, okay? And we learned about total utility and marginal utility. Well, this is the same idea. This is marginal revenue, which is related to total revenue. And this is marginal cost, which is related to total cost. And the way that you calculate marginal revenue from total revenue is exactly the same as how you calculated marginal utility from total utility, okay? And it's the same thing with marginal cost. You use the same exact procedure, okay? So let's define marginal revenue, and then we'll talk about a couple of these formulas we have. Marginal revenue is the additional income earned. Remember, income earned is total revenue. Total, all of the income earned is total revenue. This is additional income earned by a firm when it produces and sells one more unit of output. So when the firm decides to just make one more, let's say currently they're making like, you know, 130 cheeseburgers. And now they decide, well, what if we made 131 cheeseburgers? What if we made one more cheeseburger? What would happen to our revenues? What would happen to our total revenue? What would be the additional total revenue or what would our total revenue go up by, I guess is a better way of saying it, okay? What, is the, what would we add to total revenue when we produce and sell one more cheeseburger or whatever the one more, whatever the product is, okay? So the way that we find the marginal revenue, the, one of the ways that we can calculate marginal revenue is we can take total revenue and then subtract the previous total revenue. And look, this will tell us how much total revenue goes up by. How much does total revenue go up by from 780 up to 810? Well, 810 minus 780, that's 30. So if we decided to go from 17 and we do one more, that'll put us up to 18. Well, what's the added marginal revenue would be the added revenue going from 17 up to 18. Well, the added revenue is 30. And the way we found that was we took the total revenue for 18 and we subtracted the total revenue for 17, Q minus 1. So if Q is 18, then Q minus 1 is 17. 18 minus 1 is 17. So the total revenue from 18, that's 810, minus the total revenue from 17, that's 780. Well, 810 minus 780 is 30. And that would be the marginal revenue for whatever Q is, which is 18. So the marginal revenue of the 18th unit is 30. So put a 30 here. What about the, to what about the marginal revenue for the 19th unit? Well, then we'll take 835 minus 810. 835 minus 810, that's 25. So the marginal revenue of the 19th unit is 25. All right, now we don't know what the total revenue is for the 20th unit, but we do know the marginal revenue of the 20th unit. And so we can use this formula over here. If we want to know, let's say that Q, in this case, quantity is 20. We want to know the total revenue for the 20th unit, total revenue for Q20. So if we want to know the total revenue for 20, we're going to take the total revenue for 20 minus 1. 20 minus 1, that's 19. So we need the total revenue for 19. Total revenue for 19 is 835. So the total revenue for 20 is going to be 835 plus the marginal revenue of the 20th unit, which is 23. So we just take these two numbers right here and add them together. This plus 23 is 858. Okay, And so the total revenue for producing and selling 20 units is going to be 858. And so you can see that this is very similar to the relationship between marginal utility and total utility. Only now it's marginal revenue and total revenue, okay? All right, so now let's uh, talk about marginal cost. It's the exact same thing. 
It's the exact same thing as marginal revenue, only it's, a, it's the cost. It's related to total cost. Instead of the additional income earned by a firm, it's the additional expense paid by a firm. Well, remember, t all expenses paid by the firm is total cost. So this is the additional expense paid by the firm. So this is what, what's added to total cost when the firm produces and sells one more unit of output. When quantity, remember a unit of output is quantity. One more unit of output is one more quantity. So when we're going from quantity 35 up to quantity 36, that's one more unit of output. So if total cost, now you may ask up here, how come we didn't find the marginal revenue for the 17th unit? Well, to find the marginal revenue for the 17th unit, marginal revenue 17, we'd need the total revenue for 17, and we'd need the total revenue for 16. 17 minus 1 is 16. Well, we don't have the total revenue for 16. That's not on the table. So we cannot answer that question. Same thing here. We can't find the marginal cost for 35 because we would need the total cost for 34, which we don't have. So to find marginal cost, we're, we're going to have to start with marginal cost of 36. And what we'll do is we'll take the total cost for 36 and subtract the total cost for 35. 640 minus 590, that's 50. So the marginal cost of the 36th unit is 50. And we have the formula right here. The marginal cost of the 36th unit, Q is 36, is equal to the total cost of the 36th unit, because Q is 36. Total cost of the 36th unit is 640. So this is 640 minus the total cost of the 36th unit minus 1. 36 minus 1 is 35. So this is total cost of 35, which is 590. So 640 minus 590 is 50. And now we can do the exact same thing for 37. Now the marginal cost of 37, which is going to go right here, is total cost of 37 minus the total cost of 36, because 37 minus 1 is 36. So we're going to do 692, total cost of 37, Minus the total cost of 36 is 640. 692 minus 640, that's 52. Now we already know the marginal cost of the 38th unit, but we don't know the total cost for 38 units. Well, we're going to do the same thing that we did up here. Remember, we did 835 plus the marginal revenue of the next one. Same thing here. 692 for 37 plus the marginal cost for 38. If we add these two numbers together, we get our total cost. And that's right here. Total cost for 38 is equal to the total cost of 37. 38 minus 1 is 37, plus the marginal cost of 38, because the Q is the same as this Q, 38. And so 692 plus 55, that's going to be 747. Okay? And so this relationship between total cost and marginal cost is the same relationship as the relationship between total, total revenue and marginal revenue, and it's also the same relationship as the relationship between total utility and marginal utility. Okay. Now, I want to point one thing out, and then we're going to go over to the table, and we're going to fill in uh, marginal revenue and marginal cost, and we're also going to go down a couple more rows. Okay. Um, notice that marginal revenue, as quantity goes up, marginal revenue is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's because of the law of diminishing marginal benefit. Revenue is a benefit. Marginal revenue is a marginal benefit. And therefore, as our quantity increases, our marginal benefit is going to diminish under a set of fixed circumstances. Similarly, marginal cost is an opportunity cost. And therefore, as quantity increases, our opportunity cost is going to increase because of the law of increasing opportunity cost. And therefore, our opportunity cost is increasing and increasing and increasing. Okay? All right, let's go over to the uh, table and let's fill in for marginal revenue and marginal cost. All right, got a calculator? And so we're going to start with marginal revenue and marginal cost. And all we need to get those are total revenue and total cost. Now remember, we won't be able to fill in the first row for marginal revenue and marginal cost. Because to get marginal revenue, we need total revenue plus the previous one. We don't have the previous one. To get marginal cost here, we need total cost and the previous one. 
We don't have the previous one. So we can't do these two, okay? So we're gonna jump ahead to this one right here. So marginal revenue for 41 is gonna be total revenue for 41 minus total revenue for 40. So 21, 20. 21, 81, 20, minus 21, 30. And that's going to be 51, 20. So the marginal revenue of the 41st unit is going to be $51.20. 51, 20. Now marginal revenue for the 42nd unit is going to be the total revenue for the 42nd unit minus the total revenue for the 41st unit. So 22, 32, 30, right here, minus 21, 81, 20. That's 51, 10. So 51, 10, okay? And now look, we have marginal revenue for the next two. So um, we're probably going to have to use those to fill in all these, some of these blank spaces. Now let's do the same thing for marginal cost. To get marginal cost for the 41st unit, we're going to need the total cost for the 41st unit minus the total cost for the 40th unit. Well, 1900 minus 1850, that's 50. So $50. And now to get the marginal cost for the 42nd unit, we're going to need total cost, 1950 and 20 cents, minus the total cost for the 41st unit, 1900. All right, well, that's easy. This is going to be $50.20. 50 and 20. And then we have the marginal cost for the next two, which we're probably going to need to fill in the rest of the space. Okay? Um, so notice here, once again, what's happening to marginal re revenue? 51.20. As quantity goes up, we go 51.10, 51, 50, and 90. Marginal revenue is diminishing. And what's happening to marginal cost? It's increasing, 50, 50, 20, 50, 40, 50, 60, okay? All right, let's come over here and fill in a couple of, we're gonna do two more rows here. We're gonna fill in the quantity, 42, 43, 44, okay? We know fixed cost is gonna be 500, 500, 500. Okay, great. Now, marginal revenue is gonna allow us to find the next total revenue. So remember, to find total revenue, we take the previous total revenue and add to it the marginal revenue. So we're going to take 22, 32, 30, and add 51. So 22, 32, 30, plus 51. Tw so 22, 83, 30. 22, 83, 30. Now we can do the same thing here. We can take the 22, 83, 30, and add 50, 90, the marginal revenue, plus 50, 90. 2334, 23, whoops, not a decimal. Hang on a second. 34, 20. Okay, great. Now let's go to total cost. To find total cost here, we'll take the previous total cost, 1950 and 20, and add the marginal cost, 50, 40. So 1950 and 20 plus. $50.40, $50.40, that gives us $2,000.60, so $2,060. Now, to find the next total cost, we'll take this total cost and add the marginal cost for the next one, 50 and 60. So we're going to take the 2,060 and add $50.60, and that gives us 2,051.20. 51, 20, okay? And now we can use this information, total revenue minus total cost gives us profit. So 2283, 30 minus 2,060 cents. That gives us 282.70, 282.70. This is good news. Look, profit is going up. As we produce a higher quantity, profit is increasing. So that's good news. 20, so now we'll take 2334, 20, and subtract 2051, oops, subtract 2051, 20. And that gives us 283. So 283, good. 
Now we just got a couple over here. Variable cost, well we know that variable cost plus fixed cost equals total cost. So if we subtract fixed cost from total cost, we'll have variable cost. So $2,000.60 minus $500 is $1,500.60. So $1,500.60. Similarly, take 20 and 50, 120, and subtract 500, and we get 15, 51, 20. 15, 51, 20. Okay, almost done. Now we just need the price. So to get the price, we're going to take total revenue, 2283.30, and, and divide by the quantity, 43. So 2283.30 divided by 43, and that gives us $53.10. 53, 10. And now we'll take 2334.20 20, and divide by 44. And we get 5305. 5305. Okay? Now I do want to show you one more thing. Now note, we have finished one, two, three, four, five rows, and we finished all the way over to marginal revenue and marginal cost. This is what we have learned so far. In the next set of lessons, we're going to move on and we're going to learn about these three other variables, and we're going to, we're going to finish up the whole table. Okay? But I do want to point something out to you. I want to, I want to show you something. You see how we find marginal cost, how we do total cost minus the previous? So 1950-20 minus 1900 is 50 -20. Well, because total cost is made up of fixed cost and variable cost, and because fixed cost is not going up, fixed cost is not increasing. So fixed cost is not contributing at all to marginal cost, the additional cost from producing more. This marginal cost is only being affected by variable cost. So we can actually use variable cost. You should make a note of this. That marginal cost can actually be determined from variable cost. So if we do variable cost, 1450-20, minus variable cost, 1400, we get 5020. Look, 5020. We can do the same thing for 5040 here. We'll take 1500 minus four, uh, six and 60 cents minus 1450.20, and this is $50.40. Well, look, $50.40. And so I'm just showing you that even though we define marginal cost as the change in total cost, it's also the change in variable cost. So if you don't have total cost, but you do have variable cost, you can still get marginal cost, okay? And that's it for these, uh, these two variables right here.